Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. The currency market has been abuzz with the RBI circular or rather reinstated circular on the exchange traded currency derivatives regulations. There is a panic situation at trading desk of several brokerages who are scrambling to wind up their positions uh, in the rupee futures market. We have Mr. Abhilash Koikara, head of Forex and Commodities at Novama Group with us to discuss what this circular actually means and why is it causing this chaos. Welcome Abhilash. Uh, my first question to you is what according to you is the rationale behind this RBI circular and uh, anyone who's transacting in the currency futures market has to have an underlying unhedged forex exposure which is what the RBI states but why is it causing this panic because to my mind I think that is what the RBI had always said yeah so thanks Mimansa for having me <clears throat> so let me just put things into context so RBI had come up with a circular in 2015, 2018, right, that exposures up till 100 million US dollars can be kind of traded on the exchange for hedging, right, without giving any underlying, right. So the, con the person who wants to actually trade on the exchange does not necessarily have to give any underlying or a contracted exposure. Beyond 100 million, we are supposed to provide an exposure, right. Now what has changed is that in January, there's a circular which has been come from RBI which has clearly stated that even if you are trading within the 100 million limit, there has to be an existence of a contracted exposure. So even a quantity of $1,000 or $2,000 if someone is trading on the exchange, uh, the existence of that underlying contract has to be there. When I mean an underlying contract, uh, basically it is that if you are an importer or an exporter, you should have an invoice or a bill of lading or a contract which is basically saying that you have a particular amount of exposure in foreign market currencies only with the existence of that is what you can trade on the exchange, not without that. So basically for people who are trading without any underlying exposure, this has kind of meant that they will not be able to trade post 5th of April 2024. Okay, so, uh, so the underlying exposure that a client has and their trading positions, they have to be equivalent, is it? Correct, so basically what it says is that in case the, the client is taking a position of say $10 million, for the June maturity, he should have at least $10 million of exposure and the maturity of his actual invoice has to be beyond June. So it cannot be an exposure which is for May and he has taken a position for June. The exposure can be June or beyond, but he has to have that amount has to cannot be more than his contracted exposure and the duration cannot be higher than the duration of his contracted exposure. Mm -hmm. So the actual invoice has to be or the contract with the client has with the party has to be within the contours of the contract which is actually hedging. Okay, okay. Uh, so this circular that came on January 5th, it is exactly the same as what has been already mentioned by the RBI. So nothing really has changed on the regulation front. Is It's just that now clients will have to give uh, a proof or an evidence of their underlying exposure uh, uh, equivalent to their uh, uh, positions in the mar market, right? Yeah, so earlier the thing was that there was uh, not a requirement of an existence of exposure till $100 million mm -hmm. because neither exchanges nor brokers were asking for it. But now the f new regulation being very circular being very, very clear that there has to be an ex uh, existence of an exposure. Now exchanges as well as brokers would be asking for some undertaking and the underlying exposure for any person or a company to trade on the exchanges uh, on, the, on the currencies which are denominated by INR, which is typically today's USD INR, GEP INR, Euro INR and JPY INR. So all these currencies, if someone has to trade, they have to kind of give an undertaking as well as the ex contracted exposure basis which they are taking that position on the exchange, mm -hmm. which was not the case which was followed before the circular came into existence. Okay, okay. So uh, Abhilash, if you could explain it for the viewer that in the futures market, who are the participants and sure. what percentage of participants and what percentage of speculators and arbitrageurs are in the market and how is it going to impact the... Sure, so if I look at data uh, which we have been studying, uh, roughly around, uh, if I'm not wrong, around 5 to 6% of the market volume is from corporates, right? These are proper hedgers, right, who have underlying import-export exposures. Around 7% to 8% is FPIs, right, who are on institutions and FPI who are hedging their uh, kind of exposures. And rest of is a mix of uh, arbitrages, it is a mix of speculators, and it's a mix of prop desk. So if I had to put a number around 85% of the volume uh, are not volume for hedging purpose, right? And as per the RBI circular, which is kind of clearly saying that they want to ensure that exchange traded currency derivatives are used only for hedging purpose. Mm -hmm. 
and it was brought in with that intention of that SMEs and MSMEs could hedge on the exchange. Uh, but if I look at the current scenario, after almost 15 years now, since the, since the contract has been launched, around 85% of the volume is, is non-FPI and non-hedging uh, volume, and it is majorly driven by arbitrageurs, prop traders, and uh, speculators in the market. Okay. Okay. So. Does that mean that this entire 85% of uh, turnover that was coming from speculators and arbitrageurs is going to go away and then uh, the currency derivatives market is going to go for a toss or how, what is the outlook on the market in general? Yeah, so for a for a natural hedger actually nothing changes right because uh, earlier he used to, so basically you need to understand even if someone is doing some forwards through banks they have to give an underlying right. The same way if an importer and exporter wants to hedge on the exchange, they can give an undertaking as well as an underlying and they can hedge on the exchange. The, the difficult part which market is trying to gauge and that is where the entire uh, panic is about is that if 85% of the market is not allowed to trade because these were basically, as I said, prop traders, arbitrages and uh, speculators, we did not have actual underlying to kind of trade on the exchange. Then even if someone wants to naturally hedge their exposure on the exchange, they will not find any counterparty okay. or that kind of liquidity will not be there to kind of encourage the SMEs and MSMEs to come on the exchange. So the purpose that which is should be only for natural hedgers, for them nothing changes from a circular perspective for hedging. Apart from the fact that we'll have to see how much liquidity is left in the system once this 85% after 5th April, once this 85% of market participants are out of the market because they cannot provide underlying as of now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because you mentioned liquidity and uh, a lot of it ha was coming through, is, has been coming through speculators and they are said they are the market makers in the derivatives market. So do you think, and we have in the past we have seen that uh, people, traders have taken the arbitrage opportunity between the NDF market which is the offshore market and futures market. So do you think this lack of liquidity uh, as it fizzles out it's going to create more arbitrage opportunity. Uh, can can that continue? Sure. So uh, in terms of uh, market mispricing, obviously this step might lead to some mispricing in the market because of lack of liquidity. And actually, we have been seeing that in the last couple of days, where if you look at few option prices, those prices have got inflated as we are speaking today, mm -hmm. right? Because the entire market has become one-sided because they have to exit the positions by fourth. But whether it will be a long-term phenomena, it is difficult to say because even for arbitrages, one basic requirement is liquidity, right? So if they are doing an onshore offshore, uh, typically people who have access to offshore would be large arbitrages, right? So if they are doing an offshore onshore transaction, if there is lack of liquidity on the exchange, then that might deter them from kind of exploring those arbitrage opportunity. So I find this mispricings will prevail for some time uh, till the time the entire positions get scored off because market is one-sided now, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, visible as we speak, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see any persistent arbitrage opportunity to, uh, to be lying there where people will exploit it because of the liquidity constraint which will come in the exchange market post the circular comes into effect on 5th of April. Okay. Okay. Which is exactly what RBI wants in a way that they don't want any speculative trades happening in the that, currency That market. looks to be clearly the intent of the RBI. As I said, uh, for a normal hedger, the intent of RBI as per circular is that currency derivatives should be used for hedging purpose for SMEs, MSMEs and corporates. Uh, the only challenge as I kind of uh, uh, earlier alluded to is that the, vol the any market, the volume is basically made by speculators, market makers and arbitrages. So even if a hedger wants to kind of hedge today, uh, the volume might be uh, a stumbling block for the person to hedge on the exchange, even after having a contracted exposure. So which is basically the worry of the market. Mm -hmm. The liquidity of the market, uh, which has been built over the last 15 years, uh, it can kind of completely dry up. Uh, and people who have genuine exposures on their book, they might not be able to find counterparty liquidity on the market. Mm -hmm. But they could go through forwards market as well. Right? Yeah, so they have uh, they have the option of uh, forwards with the bank, which they always had. Uh, the intent of uh, enabling exchange was basically uh, that on the forward side, the transparency and the pricing is, is dependent with a bank dealing desk. It's an OTC market, mm -hmm. where on exchange, it is very, very visible. You can kind of log on to your app and see what is the dollar rupee rate today, mm -hmm. right? What is the futures price? So ease of execution uh, in terms of ease of entry and exit, uh, ease of regulation. So all those things were kind of pushing the smaller corporates as well as the larger corporates to kind of increase their hedging on the exchange. Mm -hmm. But forward was an opportunity or was an, was an option which was always there in the market. So the idea was not to replace forward, the idea was to give a more accessible instrument 
uh, for SMEs and MSMEs. That was, I think, the intent of RBI when we introduced currency futures. And now they are also re-emphasizing the same. Like if you look at the circular, it's okay, it's open for risk management and hedging. Yeah. But the worry again is the liquidity part because any 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 market requires uh, all kind of market participant to generate the liquidity yeah. in the market. And if you have only one kind of participant, uh, it can kind of uh, kind of be a little bit of struggle to find counterparty to kind of execute your trade. Hmm. Okay. But to your mind, uh, do you think that this liquidity can be replaced by in any other way or uh, how can this be a problem that can be solved in a say in medium term because now the liquidity has gone, it's going to come yeah, down? Short term, definitely it is going to have an impact. Uh, anywhere between 75 to 80 percent drop we can see and we have actually seen drop in volume like uh, we are around 25, 30 percent down day on day from 2nd of April yeah. in terms of volume. Uh, in the long term, obviously, if more and more corporates get encouraged right, uh, to hedge on the exchange, uh, more liquidity can come in. But again, I don't see it coming in the short term uh, because now with anyone wants to execute trade, they have an option with the bank. So it has to be really liquid on the exchange for people to kind of take that effort to kind of hedge on the exchange. So more and more corporates getting involved uh, by, show, by being comfortable sharing the underlying. Uh, can be a trigger to kind of uh, drive the volume. Otherwise, I think in the short term, medium term, looks difficult for us to get back to the volumes where the market were trading. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, in, the, in the last two, three months, there was a lot of uh, exotic trade, exotic options trade that was happening in the market, and that was because of the RBS consistent intervention in the market and uh, keeping the rupee as stable as it was. It was. Uh, do you think that is also one of the reasons why RBI may have reinstated, felt the need to reinstate the circular? Yeah, so basically rupee was kept in a very tight range, right? So it has been uh, in a very tight range. So there was a lot of uh, option writing, uh, right, in terms of especially in options, right, in terms of positioning. Uh, and this could, and obviously because, uh, as you know, currency is highly levered, right? So as of now, the margin requirement on currency is only 2.5%. So you get 33 times the leverage. So there, 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 is a, there, there have been uh, uh, instances where clients' positions have been there on, uh, on options. And I'll not quite exotic structures, but structures on the options, right, which are similar to, say, what people do on equity FNO, right? So structures like that. Uh, so that had definitely increased, uh, there is no doubt about that and probably one of the intent of RBI would be kind of to take out that uh, speculative options trading on the market which a lot of uh, retail participants also have got involved in. Mm -hmm. So that could have been one of the intent but that will definitely again dry up the liquidity because yeah. uh, if they are out of the market I think very few participants are there in the market. So this might be one of the reasons uh, 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 apart from the fact that they only want it for natural hedgers and it should only be used as a derivative tool to hedge your exposures and not to trade. And obviously trading volume, as I said, is around 85% yeah. uh, of the exchange volume today. Uh, so that might definitely be one of the reasons why uh, why uh, RBI could have come up with the step that we require a contracted exposure. Okay. Okay. Why I'm asking this is because in the last week's trade, when the rupee had gone to 83.70 uh, in the offshore market, uh, I think some barrier options were uh, written off and people were writing uh, barrier options and those stop losses were triggered and stuff like that. So. so basically those kind of exotic options like barrier options and all are only available at bank. So exchange hmm. maybe only have simple options, right, which is plain vanilla call and put and you can make multiple structures out of it. But the knock-in, knockouts, and barrier options are something which is happening on the bank side. Okay. So those kind of exotic options were not happening on the exchange. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people without underlying were definitely taking benefit uh, of, uh, of options trading on the exchange because the margin requirement is less. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the intent, as I said, of the RBI would to kind of, kind of take away that speculative volume from the exchange. Yeah. Simple options they were doing. They, yeah, they were doing simple so. options. There are, uh, on, the, on the exchange, there are no knock-in, knock-outs, barrier options. So mm -hmm. exotic options are not there. Yeah. Only simple call and put options are traded, uh, basis which you can make different strategies like you do in equity FNO right. uh, or commodity FNO and you can trade strategies through that. But the exotic options was is not is now never accessible through exchange. Okay, okay, got it. Um, how relevant, this is the last question for the chat, how relevant do you think futures market is going to be uh, after this circular, after April 5th? Because a lot of brokerage, brokerages that we spoke to are expecting some clarification coming in from the regulators and some leeway coming in or some leeway coming in from the regulators. What is the future going to be for the currency futures market? So uh, as I said, we're definitely going to see a drop in volume. 
uh, uh, from an operational perspective, it is it is very similar to what the corporates were doing currently, apart from just giving an undertaking or underlying which they actually had. But from an execution point of view, it's going to be a challenge. And that is why I think most of the brokers uh, are kind of waiting for some clarification. Can there be a reduction in the limit? Uh, or can RBI come up with more clarification which can increase some kind of volume on the exchange? So that is what the brokers are waiting for. Uh, but uh, as of now, there is no clarification from RBI. Even from exchanges, we have got clear mandate that you have to adhere to RBI circular. So in the short term, for definitely, we see the futures market getting dried up. Uh, and uh, most of the clients going back to forward markets uh, to kind of hedge their exposures. Uh, unless there is some clarification or some, uh, if I could say they use the word, uh, relief in terms of exchange volume which can come up. So definitely looks like a dip in the volume for futures market in the next quarter. Right, right. So definitely compliance is something that is on everybody's mind and brokerages are actually scrambling to do that so that they do not attract any sort of sure. uh, issues in the from the regulator side. Correct. All right, all right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, this was Mr. Abhilash Koikara, Head of Forex and Commodities at Novama Group in conversation with NDTV Profit.